Hi, I'm Guru Karaji. I'm a software engineer at Lacework. Hi, my name is Helgi, and I'm a software engineer at Lacework. I'm Lachlan. I'm a cyber liability engineer here at Lacework. In the next 10 minutes, we will be talking about how we built a new ingestion framework at uh, Lacework called PyDream using Red Panda. Lacework is a data-driven secu cloud security platform. We provide security for applications in the cloud throughout its life cycle. To begin with, we analyze the code, code that builds the infra, catches any violations, and provide actionable guidance. During build time, we integrate with CI CD, continuously scan containers, host images, and block images that do not meet security standards before they get to production. We continuously collect cloud asset inventory, assess config for compliance with security and privacy standards, and monitor for config changes that increase exposure. After we ensure that infra and application image is secure, we continuously monitor the runtime environment. We collect container and cloud activity logs and detect abnormalities such as escalation of privileges. Our polygraph-based machine learning platform catches new threats and reduces false positives. We collect workload activity data and detect unknown threats like abnormal logins, known threats like malware, and more. For doing all the things I mentioned in the previous slide, we need to collect data from customer environments, analyze it, find the needle in the haystack, and then inform our customers about it. While doing so, we face the following challenges. We need to collect a variety of data from different sources. We deal with varying format, schema, and fidelity of the data. We collect vast amounts of application logs, activity logs, and monitoring data sent uh, by our own agents. The data sent to us from the same customer varies in volume every hour. 10x spikes are quite common in our environment. To ensure timely collection of data and delivering detection information to customers, we are required to isolate each customer's data so that they do not impact each other. All of the above challenges come in a spectrum of sizes, both small and large, and everything in between. Our ingestion pipeline is expected to handle data with all these challenges and deliver it to multiple destinations, such as data warehouse, long-term storage, and downstream pipelines. It needs to meet the most stringent SLO in order to ensure security efficacy for our customers. To compound everything further, we also need to optimize for both throughput and latency. To deliver all the expectations while handling the challenges, we need a scalable, reliable, and efficient streaming data platform that acts as a hub of data exchange between different analytical components and microservices at Lacework. Most importantly, it needs to provide us the freedom by not locking us to a single cloud vendor. In our journey to build the next generation ingestion platform for Lacework, we experimented with multiple technologies, some well-known and established, and some new. We built many POC pipelines using them and tested with production data. We measured their performance and found that while all other technologies were coming short, Red Panda excelled in more than one dimension. In fact, during our benchmarking, we hit the limitations of our benchmarking tool, but Red Panda was barely breaking a sweat. Based on the benchmarking data, we selected Red Panda to be the streaming platform on which we will build our new data ingestion architecture. Since this architecture looked too good to be true, like a pipe dream, we named it so. Helgi? Can you please take us through the details of the pipe dream? Thanks, Guru. I'm going to talk about a production software stack that we have created around Red Panda, which we call pipe dream. As Guru mentioned, strong isolation and high availability are important requirements for us. This is why we run multiple Red Panda clusters. If one cluster goes down, it will only partially affect our data streams, and we can start directing traffic away from the faulty cluster to the healthy clusters to remain available. But managing multiple clusters creates additional technical challenges. So I'm going to talk about how we solve those challenges at a high level in the pipeline architecture, starting with the control plane. At the heart of the control plane, we have a configuration service. This configuration service manages the lifecycle of all of our topics, handles creating and migrating topics, scaling up and down partition counts, setting appropriate replication factors, and balance the topics across the Panda clusters we have. The configuration service also describes the overall topologies for our pipelines, from producer to consumer. For instance, let's say we have an API server that receives inbound data. The API server will query the configuration service, which responds with the appropriate pipeline configuration, telling it what topic in which cluster it should write to. Once a pipeline has been configured with the configuration service, it is automatically picked up by the pipeline scheduler. The pipeline scheduler ensures all topics are being consumed by leasing a pipeline to workers, telling the worker which topic in which partition it should read, how to process the messages, 
and where to put the results. For instance, into a database or a combination of sinks, such as S3 or another red panda topic as the start of another pipeline. The scheduler also checks that all workers are healthy by performing periodic heartbeats and watching metrics for progress, revoking pipelines and moving them to other workers if one is suspected to be unhealthy. Finally, due to a large skew in volume between our pipelines, the scheduler also estimates resource requirements to process each partition and schedules tasks to an appropriately sized worker to maximize utilization. For instance, by packing multiple small topics together into a single node or reserving larger nodes for demanding high throughput tasks. This combination of configuration service and scheduler has solved a number of issues we faced with using Kafka consumer groups and automatic rebalancing. It improves our resource utilization and gives us a high degree of fault isolation, even between partitions of the same topic. The next challenge faced with multiple clusters is safe topic migration. If a cluster is in an unhealthy state, for instance, rejecting writes, a strict SLO and availability requirements mean we have to shift that traffic over to another cluster immediately, ideally with minimal disruption, and we need to do this for hundreds or thousands of topics quickly. Manually migrating a topic from one cluster to another is both error prone and tedious. So to help with this challenge, we developed an abstraction over at Panda topics we call virtual topics. A virtual topic is a set of metadata describing physical topics in a physical cluster over time. For example, in this figure, we have a virtual topic and this topic lives exclusively in one cluster. Let's give a scene that it has only one epoch. The epoch metadata points to a physical topic and partition in a physical cluster. But over time, as topics migrate across clusters, more epochs can be added. Each epoch has a high watermark, allowing consumers to read any part of the virtual topic corresponding to a virtual offset. The virtual offset is the logical offset into the virtual topic. And by consulting the metadata, a consumer can resolve a virtual topic to an epoch and to a physical offset within an epoch's partition. This abstraction allows us to automatically migrate a topic, regardless of the consumer status or lag, from one cluster to another with minimal hassle or production impact at scale. Producers write to the latest epoch while consumers read normally using their virtual offsets, automatically switching to a new cluster once they reach the high watermark of the previous epoch. Secondary benefit to virtual topics is that it allows us to perform partition scale down. A new epoch does not have to have the same number of partitions as the previous epoch, and this allows us to more aggressively scale up a topic to meet temporary increases in demand, and just as easily scale back down if volume decreases. And finally, this abstraction has proved immensely helpful in our operational agility, which you'll hear about next from Lachlan, who's going to talk about our Red Panther operations and infrastructure. Thanks, Helgi. I'm going to talk a little bit more about those virtual topics in just a moment, but I want to start by sharing a little bit about our Lacework infrastructure for context. As Guru mentioned earlier, we want to be cloud agnostic, so that means we're in multiple cloud providers. We have a global customer base, which means we need a global deployment, and we're currently in three key regions, AU, EU, and US. Each of these regions has multiple shards, and each of these shards has multiple Red Panda clusters. A bit about our cluster deployments. We have our cluster nodes striped across availability zones in our cloud providers and a topic replication factor of at least three, both of these things for redundancy. We're currently primarily utilizing the storage optimized I3EN instances in AWS, and we run these as bare metal self-managed EC2 nodes, though we do have plans to move to EKS in 2023. A bit of our scale by the numbers. Currently, we have just over 10 Red Panda clusters deployed, but none of these clusters have more than 10 nodes. Our total cluster disk usage is floating somewhere around 400 terabytes, and our read to write ratio is fairly balanced at close to one to one. You'll see a big difference though between our burst peak read or write throughput per second at 14.5 gig, and our average write throughput at 1.4 gig, and average read throughput at about 1.6 gig per second. Now a bit more about those virtual topics. They really do enable operational agility for us because they abstract away the concept of topic and cluster from the application. This allows us to do some cool stuff like shifting load off of a cluster for an upgrade if we want to reduce risk, forklifting our infra to one VPC from another without taking any downtime. We can even abandon a cluster if it gets into a pretty bad state seamlessly. It's also going to enable some pretty cool stuff in the future like non-destructive load balancing. We can move a customer from one cluster to another based on their reads, writes, disk usage, partition count, or even the network resources they consume. Now, this Pipe Dream project is really just the first use case we're doing at Lacework, and there's a growing interest in the technology. And we want to bring this magic of virtual topics to more of the applications by building a Red Panda or Kafka proxy sidecar that abstracts or removes the need for the developer to implement this complex logic themselves. As I mentioned, we also want to validate EKS, looking at moving to the next great version, V23, 
And we're also in interested in shadow indexing or tiered storage, so we can reduce the storage consumption on those expensive EC2 nodes and even play around with some stuff like read-only replica clusters. As I said, we're really just scratching the surface of what we're doing with Red Panda at Lacework, and we're excited to see where the technology goes in the future. But for now, thanks for joining us, and I'd like to thank my speaking partners, Guru and Helgi.